I have before me the premium vacuum pump from Harvest Right. This was one that was returned back to Harvest Right after being sold. It's defective somehow, and so Harvest Right sent it to me so I could overhaul it and do a video on its procedure. So the first thing we got to do is find out what's wrong with it. So I have my micron gauge hooked up to the port here, and we're going to go ahead and turn it on and see what kind of vacuum we can pull. Okay, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the motor is running up for a second or two and then stopping. So something is keeping this from spinning. So we're not getting in, we're not, oh, here we go. Now something's happening. And this is this really vibrating, it's noisy. And it's not pulling any vacuum whatsoever. Okay, so this definitely has some problems. So we're going to go through, strip this thing down, clean it up, take a look at the internal parts, and rebuild it and see what comes out. We are going to tear down the premium pump today. And this is actually quite a simple process. It takes a few little hints and tips here, and we're going to review those. But don't be intimidated. By doing this, just remember a couple of rules. One, there's no such thing as magic pixie dust. And what I'm meaning by that is everything is logical when it comes to any type of repair. So don't force anything, take your time, and be thoughtful on how things go together. Now, this pump has already been drained. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the muffler and we're going to need a four millimeter or a 532nd wrench. They're pretty much the same thing to take off this front case. And when taking off something like this, it has multiple bolts. Just don't go around like in a, in a clockwise position, but go back and forth, alternate. So we're gonna take this one off first, then this one down here, and up here, then this one down here. That way, there won't be any risk of stretching the seating, uh, the mating seating parts. You always want to kind of go back and forth. Same thing as like when you're uh, doing a head of an engine or a tire on a car. You want to kind of like go in the star rule back and forth. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and take these off and pull this front cover. And one other thing is as we take these off in an alternating fashion, we just want to loosen each one a little bit at a time. We don't want to take it out from a tight position all the way out. That can lead to bowing mating surfaces. Now I'm, I have my pump inside an old cookie sheet with some towels. Hopefully you can see this here. That will just, you know, help in catching any oil. And as I take this apart, I'm taking all the fasteners here and I'm putting them into an egg carton. This will just help me keep track of where all my fasteners and parts go. So this is just a, an easy way to keep track of the screws that we're going to be pulling out of this. So this is loose. We're going to go ahead and take this off. And if you want to, you can inspect inside here. Now, if you have any goobers and if your uh, screen here is full of food or anything other disgusting stuff, you can actually take this in and I would probably use uh, something like a Dawn dish detergent that can uh, surround the grease. And you can just clean up the little hole inside of here if your uh, side glass is filthy. And we're just gonna keep the gasket right in place. There's no need to play with it. If you try pulling this gasket out, you run the risk of stretching it and then it may not make a very good seal. This little item right here is the actual pump. So back here we have the motor and then right here we actually have the pump. It's only about six inches by six inches by six inches. It's a small little teeny thing. 
and this little doodad up on top here, this is the famous gas ballast. This is primarily the difference between the original standard pump that Horace Wright offered and this pump. This is what captures a lot of the uh, moisture that's coming back into the pump and sends it out uh, as exhaust rather than allowing it to mix in with the oil. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the pump from the motor and there's one, two, three, four, there's uh, four, five millimeter uh, screws holding this on. So we're just gonna take this off. We're just gonna loosen like each one just a little bit, going in the back and forth fashion. And this is a five millimeter Allen wrench screw. So we're just gonna lift this right off from the motor. Easy peasy. And since we're not gonna be working with the motor itself, we're gonna take this guy and put it to the side after I wipe off some of the oil from this. So we're just gonna concentrate on the pump itself. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take off the gas ballast. And that's, we're going back to our three millimeter wrench. And just keep all your fasteners in order by the way they come out. Okay, so this is the gas ballast. There's kind of like a filter medium right here. We're just gonna leave that how it is. And then we have the butterfly spring, uh, the butterfly valve back here that's held on with two screws. Each screw does come with it, comes with it, a little washer, lock washer. Cow. If you see how this is, the, the, the butterfly valve right here is pointed up. So let me show you exactly how it looks like. So this is the butterfly valve. It, it has a a slight bend to it facing upwards. Just remember that when we replace it, that's how it has to go on. Now opposite of the butterfly valve is the valve itself. And this is spring still, and it's kind of bent downwards. So let's see if we can take a picture of that. It kind of has a natural bend to it, and that bends down, closing off these two ports right here. And then we have valve in the back. This is all with a three millimeter screw. And this little piece right here comes off. You can just kind of see it's like a little bit of a tab there. All right. So that's pretty much done with the, the gas ballast. If you're going to make any mistake with this rebuilding project, this is where it's going to be. You gotta be very careful with this gasket. It does have some, like some Permatex trailings on here just to help seal up everything. Now, don't use a putty knife, but what I would suggest is a safety razor blade like that. And what you can do is just be very careful and just go underneath the gasket and separate the gasket from the body of the pump all the way around. If this breaks, it may not be the end of the world, but it's gonna cause some problems. So take this off, let's treat it with kids gloves. The next step we're gonna do, we're going to remove this coupler and inside we're gonna remove the little coupler cushing. It looks like an Astra symbol little teeny screw right in here is a two and a half millimeter or three thirty second. So we're going to go ahead and break this loose. And I found that nothing is more than hand tight on this pump. So, so here's the screw. Okay, right there. And underneath the screw is kind of an, 
a washer that has a bit of, has a bit of a countersink to it. So that screw in the countersink matches up just like that. And this coupler should slide right off. If there's any resistance, you can just get a screwdriver or something to kind of lift that up and out of the way. So this is the coupler. Next step is we're going to take off this retaining collar right here. And it takes a three millimeter or an eighth inch Allen wrench to take these screws out. Now this retaining ring may just take just a little bit of a tap to loosen it. And this will come off and you can see where the seal is inside here. So this is just going to go put it be put aside. So now you can kind of see some of the internal workings of the pump itself. And what I find very ingenious is the first thing you're going to see is this kind of star shaped device right here. This is the pumps oil pump. This has a small little oil pump that forces oil throughout all the different parts. I think that's quite is quite ingenious. You'll also see right here on the shaft there's a key that goes inside a keyway. If it doesn't pop out you can just kind of get a pick tool and just go right behind it and pull that out. So this is the key that goes into keyway. Then there's a, a washer we would just want to keep track of. So we're pretty much done with the front end of the pump. Now we're going to go towards the back end of the pump. This pump primarily has three pieces. We have the primary, the secondary, and then the tail piece. We're going to take the tail piece off first. And if you can just find this little ridge right here where this alignment pin goes into, and we're not going to wail on it, but just get a hammer. We're just going to lightly tap on that on both sides here. And as you do it, you can see the seam starting to open up right here. And at this point, if you wanted to, you could put a, a tool in here to help separate it if you'd like to. Okay, so that piece is off. And this will sh show you the very first uh, vein of the pump. And this is going to be the secondary vein. And don't be bothered if, if these alignment pins come out odd. It's not a problem. So we're just going to push this alignment. We can just kind of slightly pull this out. The vein is held on. The vein is connected by with these two small little springs. So you don't want to you know bend those springs up too much. This, we're just going to put this vein ap uh, aside. There's no wear on the vein. You can see the vein is tapered on the front. So we're just going to put that aside for now. And this is, a, this is the holder for that vein. If we, and we pull this out, you'll see that on the back side of this tailpiece, there's no bearing. All this is is a highly finished hole that the back of the shaft fits into. And with the lubrication, it, just, it freely spins just within that hole. So the shaft actually rides on a thin film of oil, no bearing whatsoever. And I think the engineering behind that is totally amazing. So we're gonna set this piece and the vein aside. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna separate the, the front section from the medium section or the middle section. And we're gonna do it the same way we did before there's a couple of places where you can just lightly tap and separate the two pieces. Now you might also see a little spring right here. This spring goes to an internal valve. Don't try to pull the spring out. It's seated in there. Just leave it alone. Now one thing you can do if you have problems separating this two these two pieces, is you can get a punch and you can come in from right behind where this alignment pin is 
and you can actually punch this alignment pin out of the way like so. So now that alignment pin's out of the way. These two, these, these, this piece will then open up nice and smooth. So this is the center piece. The secondary vein goes right inside of here. Now, before we remove the primary vein, we need to take care of some business on the front of this pump here. This is why I showed you where the oil pump is. On the very front of the shaft, there is going to be a thin little O-ring, and you can take a pick tool or something and just pick up this O-ring, and you can just lift it right on out. And this O-ring has just a little bit of a bevel, and so you just remember that that bevel is going to go towards the bushing here, okay? Not a problem. Now, this doesn't really have a bearing, but it has a bushing on the front nose here. And if it doesn't come up, it just might need a little bit of help taking it up. The way I usually will do this is I'll just get a pair of needles, pliers, lightly go around the shaft and just tap it upwards. I don't, want, I don't want to send this thing flying across the room. Which I just kind of did. So this is the bushing. And you can see where there's a tapered end to the bushing. And that's where that wa the O-ring goes down inside. Now, there's very few wear parts to this particular pump. This bushing is one of them. And the veins is the other. So we're going to put that aside. Now we're going to take the oil pump apart. Now, just to let you know, just like there's a keyway here on the shaft, is about an eighth inch keyway, there's also a little teeny keyway back inside the oil pump orbital. orbital. And so what we're going to do, we're going to kind of turn this upside down and I can shake this and have the oil pump fall into my hand here. So this is oil pump right there. And if you take a look, way down right in here, there's a little teeny, teeny keyway right there. We're gonna get my needle pliers and we're gonna pull this keyway out. So you can see that is just a teeny, teeny tiny little keyway right there. So it's something that's hard to find. If you take this apart and all of a sudden you find this little teeny piece somewhere, well, this is a keyway for, for the oil pump. And then this is the oil pump right here itself. It's highly machined and it just, one falls inside the other and as the thing spins, it just compresses the oil and shoots it through the pump. Very ingenious. So with all that out of the way, we can take this front shaft and just push it backwards. And this will push the primary veins out of the pump. And I can just slide the primary veins out. As you can see, they came, they fell apart here on me. So these are the primary veins. This is one here. And this is the other one. And these two will just, where the springs are, will just go right back together, like so, okay? No need to worry if they happen to fall apart. The only wear parts you have to this pump is going to be the secondary vein, the primary veins, and then we have this front bushing right there, and then we have the two uh, oil sills. So there's an oil sill right here in the retaining ring right here. There's one there. And then there's an oil sill back inside here right behind the primary vein. 
So those are the only wear parts. So we have one, two, three, there's only five wear parts for this uh, pump. It's very, very, very simple. So now here's the, the front vein assembly. And the first thing I've noticed is this is really rough. I mean, where everything else is, has this nice polished surface, this has been gouged. I would almost think that either this ran dry for a while without any lubrication in it and it has and it heated up the uh, wall in here. I wonder if we can actually take a look at that in here. If this is gouged. Now this in here is not too gouged. There's a little bit of gouging right down in here. But my guess is that whoever got this pump ran it without oil and uh, it heated up and it started to uh, gouging started to gouge the uh, impeller there i might take don't know quite quite what to do with this right here i might have to get some maybe some emery cloth and see if i can polish this up but i don't want to gouge it any more than it already is so if i can't smooth this up and get it working this pump may be a total loss because of that surface right there. Through further observation, I don't believe this thing is gouged at all. And let me tell you why. I've noticed that this pump has other uses and there's a couple of ports here. Let me see if I can find them. Okay, so right here, you can see where the manufacturer has used some kind of epoxy resin to plug up the port here and to plug up a port here and also in this coupling that goes to the back to this to the primary veins there's this epoxy resin down in here and I have a feeling that this has probably been tack welded to attach this coupler to this rotor and then they have this epoxy resin well I think what this stuff that's on here is not gouged but it's epoxy resin so I think that during the manufacturing of this, that someone got a little bit carried away with their epoxy resin and got it on the rotor. Because you can see here on my razor blade, this is epoxy resin that got onto the rotor and it's keeping the rotor from spinning well and kind of buggered it all up. So I think if I'm careful, I can either scrape this off and if I get some still wool and some solvent, I might be able to get all this epoxy resin off this rotor and it'll be uh, smooth as new. I got some 4 aught still wool, which is this stuff right here. When I mean 4 aught, that's zero, 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 four zeros. And it's a very smooth still wool. And I sprayed it with some WD-40 and I cleaned up this rotor and then rinsed it with alcohol. So this rotor now is, you know, there's all that adhesive, all that epoxy resin is gone. It's nice and smooth. So I'm really hoping now that uh, when this is reassembled with the vein, it will run really nice. So as we assemble this pump back together again, you really need to take on an appearance of a clean room. You need to have your hands clean. We need to wipe everything down. We just don't want any little particles or particulates in somewhere that could score up a polished surface. And so as this goes back together, your workbench, your workplace needs to be really clean. We're now ready to reassemble our vacuum pump. I have this piece right here. This is a piece that had all the epoxy garbage all over it that kind of seized it up. And so we're going to go ahead and reassemble it. I have everything all spread out and I also have some oil here. And I'm, what I'm going to do is as this is assembled, I'm going to virtually dip my pieces, my parts in oil as we reassemble them so that everything will have a nice thin film of oil as we put this together. So we have the primary or this, uh, I have the primary rotor assembly here with the primary veins. These just get assembled back together again. Spring goes inside of each of these teeny holes here, like so. 
and I'm just going to take these and slide them right back into position just like that. So we're going to go ahead and place that right back into the shaft right back into home so it looks just like that and the shaft will stick out the other end. So the next thing we're going to do we're going to assemble the oil pump which is this little device right here. We have the internal and external orbiters and if you remember we also have the little teeny keyway that goes inside the internal orbiter, orbital. Here's that little teeny keyway and that will go right down here into the base of the shaft. And then we can go ahead and slide these two pieces on. You can do it one at a time if you want or separately and that just snaps right into position just like so. Easy peasy. And I'm just going to go ahead and lubricate this front piece really good. We're then going to get this piece right here. Remember this is the piece that comes up against here. It's nice and smooth. So this piece and this piece will just slide back together again like so. And then we're going to take the alignment rods. We have one here. And remember we have one that's still this piece right here. So we have the two alignment rods and those will just go right into the sides here and here they just slide right into place. Like so. Okay. And then we'll take our secondary vein. We have those right here. Dip those in oil. And those will just slide right into its rotor. Like, like so. And if you take a look down inside here, you can see where there's a the drive right here has a notch. And this drive, of course, has its notch two and that will just go right on to each other just like that everything will be nice lined up nice and flush and we have the back piece here just going to go ahead and put some oil on top of that and that will slide on top right on to the alignment pins. Remember this? Remember these are the two ports for the butterfly valve. We have the valve itself which is a really thin piece of metal and that goes in a downward position covering those two ports. And the top of the butterfly valve goes in an upward position on top just like so. And that is held on by two small little screws. One there. And one here. And then we have the, the rear valve right there. The pressure relief valve. And that will just goes over there with its screw. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten these up. And these were all just pretty much finger tight. Then we're going to take the gas ballast, which is this piece right here, have a, has a hole here and here and here and here, and that just covers the butterfly valve, 
like so. So the gas ballast is back to back together again. We're going to take our bushing, and that's with the tapered end upwards. And we're going to go ahead and slide it back over the shaft, like so. Then we're going to get our retaining ring and slide that over. through the sill we get one of our little screws and pick up the threaded holes underneath and we're just gonna hand tight these screws in for now and then remember this little o-ring that kind of had a bit of a taper that will just go down over it and right on top of the bushing and then next comes this little silver washer and that goes right over, it basically sits right on top of the bushing. And next we have the keyway that goes right back into the key slot. And then we have the coupler itself. You have to line up the slot for the keyway with the key. And that just goes right onto place. Give this a little bit of a tap to send it home. And then we have our washer that had the tape the tapered seat and the screw here that goes right inside on top of the coupler and then the screw goes into the center and we're just going to tighten this up here like so. So this completes the front piece. We're now ready to insert the pump back into its housing to be made it up with the motor. So we have the little coupler cushion that's going to go on top here and then we have our gasket and one of the things we're going to do to help align everything and keep the gasket in place we're going to go ahead and put in two of the bolts here and that will help keep the gasket in place as we line up as we line everything else up here so that's in place now we're going to go ahead and thread the bolts in and then we're going to get the two other bolts here to go into the bottom then we're going to tighten this in a crisscross pattern with equal tightness. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the cover and put that back over and we're going to tighten this in a crisscross pattern so we're going to go ahead and fill this with oil we'll replace the cap and we'll go ahead and test it and see how it runs the pump has been reassembled, so we're going to go ahead and kick it on. I have my micron gauge here. Running nice and quiet. And it looks like we're going to get down around the mid 60s 64 microns which is really really good so it was just that varnish and garbage that was built up on it that was seizing it up and not allowing it to run this pump is now as good as new just because of a little bit of garbage that was on some of the internal parts and now it's working just fine i hope this was helpful in showing you how you can not so much rebuild the pump but just 
go through the pump, clean things up, make sure everything is in working order, and then just go ahead and reassemble it, and it runs just as if it was new. So thank you for your time. I hope you learned something that's valuable to you. And as always, please subscribe and go forth and freeze dry the world.